At this time, we have C.J. Donaldson. Uh, questions for C.J.? So, C.J., did you guys get a feeling going into last week's game that the offense, and specifically the run game, were, were ready to explode? Did you have that, or is it a surprise to you as well? Uh, I want to say it's a surprise. Uh, all through fall camp, we both know <clears throat> that, you know, we're explosive offense, you know, rather we throw the ball, pass the ball, run the ball, whatever it is, we're just explosive. And when you get your opportunity, you know, you got to, you know, showcase it and, you know, make the most of it. So uh, the following week against Kansas, we threw the ball very well. And uh, this week we ran the ball very well. So, you know, it just, you know, we just played great uh, team football. And uh, when the opportunities came, we uh, made the most of it. What was working best Saturday? Was there a specific thing that worked well or was it all working? The O line, <laughs> man. Those guys were creating a lot of movement. It was just easy for the cues and uh, running backs, you know, to run through those lanes and receivers. And the tight ends did a great job blocking downfield. You know, credit to those guys. You feel like the best line played all year? Uh, I wouldn't say that. It was just more of you know we just ran the ball more. They always play well. <clears throat> you notice any different type of motivation in them? Because why I talked about that he finally felt like they were clicking. And into the game in that week. Yeah, they just all they was all just on one one accord that week. Like <clears throat> with O line, I say that's probably the most difficult position. Most people don't know that. Uh because you got a lot that's thrown at you and it's five guys. If one guy messed up, it looks like it's terrible, but four guys could have been right and one guy could have been wrong. So I just think like those guys was just all on one page that day. The same page that day. That defense was last week that you faced was really, really aggressive. And a lot of times they would run themselves out of. Were you aware of that, uh, the cutback or to let them do what they do, over pursue or whatnot? Was that part of the plan? Uh, I was just being just coachable, just just listening to Coach Scott, you know, basically like he's my eyes and I'm just out there just running, uh, just practicing, basically uh, just treating uh, practice like a game. Everything I did in practice, I basically just did it in the game. Sit on the field, uh, we, uh, you know, that you were able to use their aggressiveness to your advantage a little bit? Uh, definitely. Uh, it was a point in time, you know, those, those guys was just kind of like, you know, just trying to be overly aggressive to stop the run. We definitely capitalized on that. Blocking, you were used in a blocking role a good bit, um, two backs or whatever. Uh, not as glamorous maybe as, as the ball in your hands, but do you like that role? Are you good at that role? Did you think you did well with it? I'm just a football player. Like I started, you know, I was a receiver, being recruited out of high school, played tight end for what five days, and I'm a running back. So just put me somewhere on the field, I'm gonna make a play. It could be O line, D line, running back, tight end, bandit, line, just put me on the field, I'm gonna make a play. You think you're a good blocker in, in that blocking role, though? Uh, from the coach's uh, standpoint, they said I, I did a, a pretty good job. I always feel like an improvement. Um, I remember that one play uh, we ran the ball to the right side and it was Jaheim. I, I missed my block and I felt like if I'd have made that block, Jaheim probably had a 200 yard game. So it's definitely improvement. Take us through your stiff arm on the <laughs> touchdown run. Uh, just being physical, Coach Brown, Coach Brown and Drew and Coach Scott, they always tell me like, use, use what I got. God gave me this for a reason. Just be a 200 foul, 240 pound running back. That's just a tough tackle. Make the best stiff arm you've delivered. I mean, is that something that can be a pretty good weather for you? Uh, I definitely, I'm gonna add that to my toolbox and continually grow on it. Uh, you know, it's gonna come from different angles. I just probably say it was just perfect timing, just how I jump cut and like I had like my arm was like right there when I saw the guy, and that was just like perfect timing. I just timed it up perfect. How satisfying is being able to do that, whether it's just stiff arm or putting the shoulder into the guy and knocking him back five yards when you like you're like you said, you're a big guy. How satisfying is it to be able to use that that size and that physicality to just kind of impose your will? Uh, you know, it's definitely pretty cool just knowing, like, <clears throat> that I'm a tough tackle. But at the same time, I have to, like, understand that <laughs> I got to be able to use it all the time, not just, you know, on that one play, you know, just continually build on that and become that player all the time. Chad has mentioned stiff arm a bunch when he's talked to us about have to push guys away, things like that. Did that come up in the bye week as, like, a refresher? Like, hey, let's not forget we can actually do this and just to help break tackles? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't. I've been, it just seems like Chad has mentioned the stiff arm a couple of times as a way to help you all break tackles, whether it's you or Jaheim, right? Um, does that come up on the open week? It's just a reminder of, hey, we can do this. It can be effective. Yeah, uh, going into the week, Coach Scott said, uh, have a purpose and be intentional with practice. Uh, everything you'll do in practice, you will do that in the game. So whatever you want to do in the game, you got to do it in practice. And, you know, definitely just, you know, working that constantly, just being intentional about, like, the time and the placement and how I'm using the stiff arm, you know, that definitely uh, helped. On Saturday, you're talking about the things of being a physical back. I mean, 
this is only your that was, last week was only your 24th game as a college running back, or probably as a running back. You ever think about that? You know how how far you've come as a runner, and I guess how far you still got to go. Uh, this is a practice sport, so you know we got spring ball, uh, fall camp. You know we do a lot of practice, so I kind of like get in the groove. I, I say like the games just only the time I get to like show the world what I do, but all the hard work you're done, you know, doing fall camp, spring practice, winter workouts when like nobody's watching. Are starting to come out in the games now. Yeah, uh, that you you know hadn't had a chance to really, I guess, develop and you know what I mean. You're starting to develop these things in the game, using your body to okay, your advantage. Okay, okay, I yeah, got you. Know you. What I, mean? I definitely yeah. got some questions. Um, yeah, just just learning like what type of runner I am. Uh, Jaheem, you know, he's the shifty guy and I'm the power guy. We we work better together as we showcased on um, Saturday. Just knowing like who you are as a runner. But is, it, is it fair to say then? Kind of feels like you're saying that. You have noticed an improvement in yourself. You feel like you're way better than a couple of years ago, probably more so than the naked eye of somebody just watching you. Like you know how you progressed. I wouldn't say I'm just way like better. I'm just I have a way better understanding of what's going to help me be productive and what like the team needs out of me to help the team win. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. It's more like my skill set was always there. It was just more of like, CJ, you need to do this all the time, not just this play. Like, don't go away from being this guy. Like, Coach Scott, after the season, he went to all my clips and he was like, we don't need this guy. We need this guy. So it wasn't more of me just like, just all of a sudden just being such a better player. It was just more of like me just understanding I have to be that guy all the time. Okay. Does it feel more like football when you're running the ball, you know? 50 times, 60 times, and throwing 15, and then vice versa when, when you're in a game with a quarterback and throw 35 times? It's, we just out there having fun, to be honest, man. It's, it's kind of hard to like keep track of like how many times we hand the ball off and how many times we run the ball, I mean, uh, uh, throw the ball in between the game. We just like, I don't know, it's like when the offense is out there having fun, it's kind of hard to stop us. Like, we just so explosive, like receiver, running back, tight end, quarterback, whoever touches that ball, we just all explosive. We just love being around each other. We play for one another, and we all just love having fun. When you guys are on a roll like you all were on Saturday, where offense is putting up points, defense is making stops, how does that help you all feed off one another, like offensively, defensively? Uh, definitely. Uh, I feel like Saturday, uh, coming out of that first, I would play great complimentary football. Uh, defense was getting stops. Offense was uh, <clears throat> putting up points. Off of those stops, and it just kept gaining momentum and gaining confidence as the game was going on. Did you see that way across the sideline? Like oh, yeah, de most definitely. The energy level was high. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. The energy level was high, and everybody was just like so psyched and, you know, just very like focused into the game, and everybody was just happy for one another. When you guys are running like that, or are you lobbying a coach saying, let's, let's run it some more? Let's, let's keep, <laughs> keep pounding the rock, that kind of thing? Uh, definitely. Uh, one thing about his offense, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So the, if the passing game worked, <laughs> Hey, it's not broke, don't fix it. If the running game work, it's not broke, don't fix it. Fix it. You have this great comeback win with Kansas, and you, and you jump off and have a really dominant win with Oklahoma State. How those experiences and that energy helped you like at the start of preparing for a really, really big game this weekend? Uh, just knowing we've been in some very difficult situations early on, and we know how to uh, bounce back from adversity, and we definitely know how to start fast. So we just got to uh, look at each game, get uh, great feedback, and continually build on to be a better team. I know it's only Monday, but are you, are you kind of aware a little bit of what you're up against with Iowa State defensively uh, even? Uh, uh, not, not so much. I'm about to, we kind of about to start looking at the tape right now. We kind of just finished uh, – Oklahoma State, uh, Oklahoma State uh, recap, just, you know, uh, looking at all the mistakes and all the good from that game. We turned the page over uh, after today's practice, and we're going to go in there and, you know, grind hard in the film room. What's it about night games? I, I know it was pointed out to us the Albany game was technically a night game, but this one, the lights are going to be on. It's going to be dark when you guys are playing. What is it as a player about playing night games? It's so special. You know, the Mountaineer fans, man, you know, they out there just screaming their lungs out. They just, you know, excited, excited for us to get on that field. But to be honest, man, I'm just, I just love playing when it's daytime or nighttime. And I, I feel like the team is the same way. It could be 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock. We just happy to play. Your comments on the Cole Rush uniform? Uh, man, I'm just ready to put those, man, them nice black jerseys on, man. They look, they look pretty cool, man. Uh, I try, I try my best, but you know sometimes I gotta beat a bruiser, you know. So <laughs> I try my best. After the uh, Penn State game, Neil talked about how maybe you guys weren't as prepared mentally for that one, just kind of anxious for it. 
you've been through that once, right? This is the next time. I guess what have y'all learned and, and what do you try to do better, do differently this time? Just stay calm. It's just football. What do you do to, to kind of – that's a long wait from the time you wake up to when, to when you finally kick off. What do you do during the day to kind of, I don't know, Put your mind on, keep your mind off of things to, to get ready for a, an 8 o'clock kick. Uh, throughout fall camp, uh, I feel like this year Coach Brown did a, a – uh, excellent job just preparing us for all type of uh, games, depending on what day it was. We had 12 o'clock basically practices, 8 o'clock 8 o'clock practices, and midday practices. Uh, just learning how to prepare our body for a game. So early on in camp, we did a 12 o'clock game, which was for uh, Penn State. Then we did a couple 8 o'clock night games just to prepare our body for uh, late night games and like actually traveling to the hotel and then coming back over here, just getting acclimated to like all the different things that we will see during the night game. So I feel like as a team, we definitely prepared for that. Do you like watch football during the day? Do you take a nap? Uh, it's, it's basically the same schedule, to be honest. It's just we get like a little rest time, like three hours in between. To just kind of just chill, you know, get off your feet, really just relax, to be honest. Over got a couple of touches the other day. So first chance for a young guy. What, what, what have you seen out of the young backs? What do you, what do you like? Uh, young backs, uh, you know, they just learning right now. You know, those guys definitely, when they get their chance, they definitely go uh, make some noise. <clears throat> they very uh, great with the ball in their hands, you know what I'm saying? They just have to, uh, you know, learn how to, you know, be uh, coached through the line of scrimmage, and they'll definitely take off. You know, Dior, he had his uh, first opportunity to touch the ball. You know, he did very well uh, against Oklahoma State, and I feel like he will continually build on from that. Thank you. Thank you.